Growing up, I was that one super skinny friend. You know the guy. And I feel like I just had the perfect combo for being a skinny kid. I had thin bones and really long arms, meaning not only was my default arm girth pretty thin to begin with, however, it was also stretched out. Wearing pants or hoodies any chance I got because I don't want anyone seeing my arms at school. Hey, let me see your arm real quick. Okay, sure. Haha, <laughs> look, look, you have small wrists, you have small bones, you're a skinny little bitch. You. Eventually in high school, I was introduced to the gym and lifting weights and I quickly became obsessed with it. And it was great, not just because I was enjoying the training and seeing the results, but also now when people would make fun of me or make comments about how I'm skinny, the shame I would feel associated with that was gone. Because yeah, I'm getting made fun of, but I knew that I was in the gym working on it, improving myself, so I didn't feel any shame within me. As time went on, I was gaining even more confidence in the gym, I was getting stronger, I was seeing direct results with my physique from training. However, as the years passed and I looked decent with my shirt off, I was still the skinny guy. Even during the phases where I was taking bulking very seriously and I was at a caloric surplus hitting my protein, my arms were still small. Like I kind of had a good body and I was fit, but still throw a t-shirt on me and it's do you even lift bro? And I began to feel like my physique was like this stick figure with a little rectangle body with my pecs and my abs. And then my arms, despite having some muscle and some definition, were still just so thin. And honestly, I feel like my arms were practically plateaued in terms of size until the past year, when finally I made the realizations and the changes that allowed me to grow my arms. And while they're nothing crazy today, they are so much better and so much further along than where I was starting from. And now that I've made this handful of changes on how I train, I feel like the ball is finally rolling with my arms and I finally have more of a proportional physique, not just stick figure arms. And the first thing I realized is that the split I ran for the longest time, push pull legs, was f***ing me. I feel like push-pull legs is basically the go-to default split for most people in the fitness space. And of course, I came to the decision to train that way so many years ago was because I did so much intricate, detailed research on the science of hypertrophy and splitting up body parts for different days and the effects that has on muscular growth over a period of time. And by that, I mean David Lay did it, so I did it. And while it wasn't terrible, I mean my bench was going up, my deadlift was going up, my squat... During those years of push-pull legs, my arms always seem to lag behind. And that's because the way muscles are prioritized during push-pull legs, or at least the way I prioritize them. The program I was running had me on push days do all my chest, some shoulders, and then at the end triceps. And then my pull day was do all my back, and then a little bit of biceps. And I was doing so many exercises that by the time I got to the end, which was the arms, I was fried. And I know a lot of people are going to argue, oh, well, doing your compounds and other lifts, your arms play a big factor, so it's going to grow your arms. I grew my arms just doing deadlifts and squats, and that's all I do. That's great, buddy. Not for me. The fact that by the time I got to these arm isolation exercises, I've already done five plus exercises of other things. I'm tired. Maybe I'm on a time constraint. I have to go to work or school and I just got to bang them out real quick. As well as at the time mentally, I'm not going into my sixth exercise with the same, oh, we're going to grind. It's going to go so hard. I'm going to push so hard as I would my first exercise. And that was another reason why they lagged. I was training arms at the end of my workouts and thus I was approaching these workouts with much less intensity and just overall intention as the others. So I'm sure many of those sets were basically done at a waist because I would probably finish with five plus reps in the tank or I just went really fast with them or I was using my body in motion and I just I wasn't grinding you know so eventually once I realized I was just completely tired of push pull legs I needed to change it up I needed some arm prioritization I decided to try out push pull shoulders arms legs except the push day is just chest and triceps and I thought this was going to be the goaded split because I'm training triceps one day biceps one day and then triceps and biceps one day and while I think that split did help me a little bit with some shoulder development not that much though because once I switched to my current split my shoulders actually started growing even better just like my arms but I did this split for quite some while sometimes dwelling back into the push pull leg split just because I would maybe train with friends and they everyone's on push pull legs basically and this split lasted for quite some time too all the way up until 2022 and then early 2022 i decided okay i need to change my split again however instead of this arm prioritization stuff i wanted to focus on strength so my training began just prioritizing the compound movements i was squatting and benching mostly every day and the accessories wasn't push pull legs or really didn't have any theme to be honest it's like you do your squat your bench and then maybe a lat pull down, a tricep extension, a shoulder movement, an ab movement. And here's the thing, I know while that doesn't sound very optimal for bodybuilding or hypertrophy, I mean, obviously it's not, it's a powerlifting program. I actually learned something very important that led me to my current arm growth. And that is that when I approached, say, a tricep press down on these powerlifting days, I knew that this was the only tricep movement for the day. And thus I did it with much more intention, focus. I was pushing much closer to failure. The overall intensity of the lift 
was much higher than anything I've ever done in the past. So then when I looked back at the past year of training, when I was doing the push, pull, shoulders, arms, legs, I realized I was doing so much volume because I thought that was the key to growing my arms that I neglected overall intensity. Because the truth is if I was training as hard as I should have been, there is no chance that I would have been hitting that total volume at the end of the week for my arms. So once that couple month powerlifting stint ended and I decided I wanna go back to more hypertrophy aesthetic focused while also prioritizing strength, but in a different way. I'm prioritizing strength on all the movements. I'm not killing myself squatting and benching and then dilly dallying with other stuff. So I went back to the drawing board with everything I've learned, everything I've been thinking about, and I designed my new split like this. So the first thing was obviously, I'm not going back to push pull legs. However, I do like the three day split and I needed a day that could be at least primarily focused on arms because I needed a day that I could come in with the mindset, with the intention to go as hard as I can on arms and thus delivering a very high level of intensity. I didn't want to train chest and back together. I didn't want to have to do shoulders and arms together. So I decided to do my current split, which is shoulders, back, legs, chest and arms. The reason I decided to pair chest with arms is because my chest is probably for me the easiest muscle to train. I've always been more able to train it with a very high level intensity. It gets sore much easier compared to other muscles. I can get much more work out of just two to three exercises for it. So while I'm not saying it's something that's easy for me to train, I'm saying it's something that really doesn't take up as much time or focus. So now I can go to the gym, do two to three solid intense movements, and then just completely focus on my arm day. And as I learned from the previous years, I can't go too crazy on the volume because too much volume means I'm not training hard enough. And there's also the risk of over fatiguing to where you're not recovering fully. However, I still needed to do a good amount of volume because I needed high intensity. I needed to be going to failure. I needed to fatigue. And that is where I implemented a huge amount of supersets, drop sets, and training to failure. I would say basically every single set on my arm days is at least RP 8.5, meaning my easiest sets, I still only have like one and a half reps left in the tank. And I'm doing the super sets because I get to go back and forth between bicep and tricep, which results in me not over resting, if that makes sense. Like I'm not taking five minute phone breaks in between my sets. Also, I'm just very conscious of time management. So for me, there's really no excuse for me to be in the gym for more than an hour and a half, especially if you're training hard enough, you shouldn't be able to be in the gym for over an hour and a half. So I'm doing a lot of these supersets back and forth. And as well as some of my exercises, the last set is a drop set all the way to failure in some cases. So what I found for the total exercises is I really only do four exercises for bicep, four for tricep. So you might be thinking, oh, eight full exercises? I mean, that's still quite a bit of volume. However, for my last bicep and my last tricep exercise, I only do one set. This is the final thing I do in my workouts. It is an absolute burnout going all the way to failure, being extremely intentional and focused on the muscle the entire time. I highly recommend doing single arm movements for this. And my go-tos are single arm concentration curls with a cable and then single arm cable tricep push down. So what, that's not a good motion. So how I manage the fatigue from these super high intensity days while also still training chest, back and shoulders is that I do three days on rest, three days on rest and I have leg day in the middle. So if I do back and shoulders one day, which means my biceps and my triceps got worked a little bit, I have legs the next day. And then I do more bicep and tricep and then a rest day and then again. And for me, this way has been the best thing for my arms since I started training. However, I wanna make it clear that while yes, you could have your own arm day, you can do all these fancy kinds of sets. In reality, it all comes down to intensity. These sets need to be brutal instead of having this fun, oh, we're gonna go in, we're gonna get a pump. You need to be kind of anxious approaching these workouts. And if your goal is building arms, that could be set no matter what split you decide to do. Lastly, if you're gonna be training at this level, understand that you need to be in a caloric surplus. You can't be trying to hang on to your abs, staying super lean, cause you got this cool bicep vein and this cool six pack. And if you do, well, your arms just aren't gonna grow as much as they could because you don't have the fuel to train that hard in the gym and you don't have the fuel to rebuild afterwards. Also, if you're interested, I put together my ideal blueprint for an arm day. It's completely free and the link is in the description. And if you want to know what's probably the worst part about bulking, then click this video on the screen right now. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye.